Welcome back. We have been seeing various types of fit for the same data. So, for example, for the same data, we saw a linear fit, we saw a quadratic fit and we also saw a cubic fit. Now, intuitively we could see that a cubic fit is better in this case compared to a quadratic or a linear fit, but sometimes it is not really visually obvious especially if you are dealing in high dimensions. Okay. For example, if I have this line versus this line, which one is a better fit? Okay. So, that is one question. So, immediately we might see or we might say that obviously I should look at j okay, to find out how good a fit is and my j in that case was that case was 1 by 2 m sigma i equal to 1 to m y i minus y hat i square. Okay. So, basically this was root uh, sorry not root, but mean square error. Okay. So, this is one measure of how good the fit is, but sometimes this is not a good enough measure for multiple reasons. Sometimes we just get a large value of j and we do not know whether this is a good fit or not. Typically, we would like one number which lies between 0 and 1, where we can say something like 0 is a really bad fit and 1 is a very good fit. Okay. So, we want to normalize this, this kind of theme will repeat again and again. You have a number, you would like to non-dimensionalize it or normalize it with respect to some denominator, so that you get an idea between 0 and 1. Okay. So, we will try and do that. A measure for that is something called r square. Okay. So, where we are going to is r square will lie between 0 and 1, where basically 0 means really bad and 1 means great. Okay. This is probably the best fit that you can get. Okay. For this, we need three different measures of sort of variance in data and let us look at this. Okay. Let us look at these three different statistical measures. So, let us say once again that this is our original data okay. and I have my hypothesis function. This is h of x this is my original data x versus y. Okay. Now, the ground truth at any particular point, this is the ground truth y, but what I am predicting is y hat. Okay. So, let us say this is the point x i, this is y hat i and this is y i. I should really use superscript, but this is a little bit convenient. So, I hope you understand. Okay. So, the difference between these two is some error this is the predictive error. Originally, the data that is going here and there has some variance. Remember, what is the variance? The variance is the summation of y i minus the mean square. Okay. So, this was you might recall from our probability week, this is simply the definition of variance. Okay. This is sometimes called SST, where S stands for sum, the second S stands for square, and T stands for total. Okay. So, this term is known by various, term, uh, various terminologies, sum square total or basically this is the total variance. What does total variance means? mean? Before even we had a model, there was some amount of variation in the data. Okay. There was some amount of variation in the data and this term actually uh, calculates the total amount of variance in the data before we even had a model. Okay. Okay. Now, we also have this previous term close to the previous term anyway. So, let us look at the second measure of error, y i minus y hat i square. This is our error in prediction and it is known by the term S S E, where E stands for error. 
So, the meaning of this term is fairly clear, this is simply the difference between y i and y hat i, where y i is the ground truth and y hat i is our prediction or our hypothesis or our model. Okay. So, this term is known as S S E. There is a third term or a third measure of error, this is y hat i minus y bar square. I will name this term and then explain what it physically represents. Once again S s is sum squared, R stands for regression. Now, what does this denote? So, suppose I mark y bar here. What this says is just like variance told you how much does y i vary from y bar, this term S s r or sum square regression tells you how much does your prediction vary from y bar. Okay. So, this is the variance in prediction. Statistically, we will not go into much detail about this. This is called the amount of variance captured by the model. Okay. And the first term is amount of variance present in data. So, r square is defined as s s r by s s t. Physically this means amount of variance explained or captured by model divided by amount of variance present in data. Okay. And it can be shown that r square will always be between 0 and 1. Okay. In the best case scenario, your model actually predicts all the variance which is actually present in the data and in that case it will be equal to 1. Now, it turns out that there is a nice relationship between SSR, SSE and SST, it turns out and I am going to just say this without proof, you can try the proof as a, an exercise, it is a slightly tricky proof, I must mention that in case you wish to try it out for your own edification. So, this is you can try this as an exercise. So, obviously, you can use this to realize that S s r is equal to S s t minus S s e, which gives you that r square is the same as 1 minus S s e by S s t. Okay. This is usually the form in which it is implemented, because we are anyway calculating this term the sum total error or the square sum error because that is really just the non scaled part of j. Okay. So, what we have seen in this short video is that you use r square I should not really use the term goodness of fit because it has several technical meanings, but at least one number. Uh, which is often used is something called r square. In fact, if you use many of MATLAB's inbuilt routines, they will tell you after you make a particular model, even a neural network model, because this is really general. If you use a neural network model, it will tell you your model's r square is so much. Okay. So, if you have something about 0 0.95, 0 0.96, that is a great model, that is a very good model, because a lot of data actually, actually has been captured by 
or the lot of variation in the data has been captured by what your model is. And occasionally we will be talking about R square for various problems through the rest of this course. Thank you.